Welcome to the first episode of Ensemblisms. On this episode, I would like to show you how to create a web service that controls a production item within an ensemble enabled namespace. And I'd also like to complement that web service with a uh, .NET consumer to control and take advantage of those particular web methods. Now, we have a basic production here in front of us. The star of our show is going to be this business service here on the left hand side that we will be controlling. Okay, so let's build our web service. Here I have a web service that was created using the wizard. It's, it's very simple. This is kind of what you get when you use the wizard. You get a simple method to return yourself a string. I'm going to go ahead and exemplify this here by compiling it and running it and invoking that web method so you can see how these are invoked and, and also add some congruency to the rest of the screencast. Here I'm going to open up the web service that returns a string. After we invoke it, we see we have the string episode one after there. Now I don't want to you know, litter a whole bunch of typing in this screencast, so I'm going to be doing a lot of pacing of a, a few methods here and, and doing some includes, but I want to make certain that you know is that all of the, the source code uh, will be available in the show notes for you to be able to download. So what I've created here are about four or five methods. Um, four of the methods actually do something for uh, as, as a web service. Another one is just a helper class method. Um, as you can see here, w some of these enable, some of these disable an interface, some of them check the status of an interface. But what's important that I want you to see here is this keyword web method. Uh, when you use the keyword of web method, it actually is invoked and it is actually made, it's made available as a web method um, through the SOAP class. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this and you can see which methods we have here. We have a method to disable, enable, um, one to check the interface state, and also one to check the number of records that have passed through an interface. Now this is much like the .NET um, environment here. It also provides a WSDL for us that um, is going to be very crucial to us building the consumer. Okay, so here we have a basic Win32 application that consumes a web service. It has a disable interface button which interacts with that method. It also has an enable interface which interacts with the enable interface method. Um, this status indicator is invoked and gives a status indication of whether something's up or down. And this message is, is the on records pass that is invoked on a particular timer. Okay, so let's demonstrate this. Here I have the business service of interest, if you will. Here is our culprit that we'd like to demonstrate that we can control through web services. I will take our GUI and I will fire that guy up. And it's up and running. And it looks like it's reported the status, and it has. And it also has reported how many messages have went through that interface. What I want to show you now is how it will control it by enabling it and disabling it. So we have just disabled it. And you can see that it's went down uh, on the ensemble side. Now let's go ahead and enable it with our GUI. And again, invoking the enable method in our web service. And also disabling it. So there's nothing amazing going on here, but it does show you the power of how you can interact with the business items, if you will, uh, via a web service through invoking it through SOAP. So here is Interface Explorer. I'm going to show you the bottom half here where we um, show you in real time how many messages are going through here through the timer. So in Interface Explorer, I'm going to use their TCP connectivity. I'm going to go ahead and review my axe, select one, and I'm going to send it in. So you see we're at 32 messages, and as I sent one in, it has incremented that. So again, I'll send another one in. I have this act coming back right in front of my GUI there, but as you can see, it incremented to 34. So what I'll do here is I'll uh, I'll send a bunch in. I won't view any acts, and hopefully you'll see. Yeah, there it goes. It incremented to 38. So uh, yeah, here I'll grab another sample file set from IE and send in one, four more. As you can see, it incremented. So there we go, and that is uh, the quick demonstration. So what's next? Let's extend it to actually do something a little different. Now I'm going to add a method here. This is going to grab 
a message out of the message class. This will instantiate a single message and return the raw content. Now you may find this useful in in um, troubleshooting your productions where you want to grab the raw text of a message. So it's a very simple um, web method to quit with the raw content. As you can see after I've compiled it, here it is. It's a get message by ID. So to show you how this works, let's go ahead and go back to our production, go to the message browser, pull up a particular message, grab an ID. Looks like this is ID 47 that just went through that production item. We'll come back to our web service that we've just deployed this new method on. We'll check it. We'll give it a message ID of 47. As you see, it returns it to the browser. Now, now that we have that method there, why don't we revisit what we did on the .NET side and see if we can consume it and get it back into the Win32 GUI instead of just invoking it to a browser. So I grabbed the WSDL and I'm back to my .NET application. I'm going to go ahead and mess with the form here and throw some controls on it. This shouldn't take too long. I'm going to grab um, a text box control and move this to my form. Now this text box control is the one that I want to store the contents of the raw message coming from Ensemble. I'm going to set the properties here to uh, multi-line that way um, it, it fits in there a little bit better. I'm going to go grab another text box which will be uh, the me asking for the input of the message ID from the user and of course adding a button to uh, invoke the method and to to actually do what the user says, which is get the message. So, okay, it doesn't look very great. That's okay. Um, again, this source code as well will be included in the show notes so you can mess with it all you want. But let's go into that action on click. Now, this is where it all, all the magic happens in .NET with, with uh, SOAP services. I go in to add a web reference, and I point it at the WSDL that we had... Um, built and I give it a name and when I give this reference a name I can add it as an object to my project now this is extremely powerful because there is my you see it right there I'm, I'm doing this again adding another message here to show you but once I instantiate this object inside of .NET here in Visual Studio I can invoke any of those SOAP methods and return any of that data or invoke um, uh, methods to do things within the production right here from my application. So here is the object that, that runs it all. Now what I want to do is, let's say we had a text box, I think it was text box 2, that we wanted to um, store the result of the calling of the SOAP method get message by ID. One of the parameters that we supplied to that was a string which was a uh, message ID that should be an integer but who's who's watching and that should do it so barring anything goes wrong here let's swing it and see what we got as we're running our app nothing crashed that's cool let's give it the same ID as we gave it before I think it was message ID 47 invoking the web method and out comes the raw content of the message so there you have it, and that's our episode. Thank you. Special thanks to Laconic Designs for the complimentary copy of Interface Explorer. Go to www.laconic-designs.com for your evaluation copy today. It has a ridiculous amount of things that help you through your day, including new lightning-fast ensemble support. Go check it out. Thanks.